Hey there guys, I'm Frenzy the Killbot, and I've got a new game here for you. However, I'm not going to introduce it. I'm going to let it introduce itself in a very uh, James Bond type of way. Oh yeah, it's Perfect Dark Zero. This is the prequel to one of my favorite games ever, Perfect Dark. Uh, this game, however, is, um, well, uh, well, we'll get to that. I think what we're going to do is we're going to jump right into the first level, and I'll talk more about the game after the tutorial sequence. So we're going to be playing through the game on Perfect Agent. There's a whole bunch of different difficulties, but this one will be the, uh, the best to show off. Let's get started. Watch yourself, Joe. You're on Datadyne property now. Our employer wants you to break in, undetected. Mega corporations don't take kindly to intruders. Security is tight. Cameras, laser tripwires. Nothing you can't deal with, but I'm on hand just in case. Let's start with that spider bot up there. It's locked down the door for repairs. No time to hang about. Shoot it and get out. So here we are on what is apparently Datadyne property. That's a name you'll recognize from the original Perfect Dark. What is it with those things? Guess you better take them out too. Got one. These guys are a little bit weird. And the other. Okay, get going. Before we get too farther, I'm gonna introduce this gun here. So this is the P9P. Uh, it's quite obviously our starting weapon for the whole game. It's pretty good. It's got a uh, it's got does a decent amount of damage pretty accurate, especially when you use the scope. Uh, it can zoom in uh, to times four, and you can actually adjust the level of zoom by using the left trigger. It's kind of a nice touch. This gun also happens to be what the guys in TFR might call tactile all. Uh, the secondary function adds a silencer, which makes the gun more accurate as well as silent, but it reduces the amount of damage you do. It also has a tertiary function, which is a flashlight. And this is kind of a nice touch. There's just no point in the game where you will ever need it. Anyway, get used to this gun because uh, you're going to be seeing it a lot in the first couple levels. Let's keep moving here. That uh, voice you heard is Chandra, and she's going to be our mission support through most of the game. Single laser tripwire. Crouch and sneak beneath it. <laughs> I thought security was gonna be tight. 
Well, this place we're in appears to be underwater. We're in, like, Rapture 2.0. Kind of nice looking, actually. You're kidding! All this security just to protect wooden crates? Whatever. Smash them up and get to the door. Go! through that sensor field. Dive through it. You'll be okay. Hmm, you make it look easy. Dodging's great for avoiding enemy fire. They can't get a lock on you when you dive. You're supposed to be able to avoid damage there. Stupid roll. You're coming up on a security camera. I broke its link to the main system, but it's smart enough to shut the door if it spies you. Stand on the waypoint and shoot it out from cover. Like the combat rule there, the cover system is a new feature in this Nobody game. Nobody does it better. You can always hide to attack enemies from safety, okay? Time to get going. See, we got a couple enemies up here, and I prefer to do things silently. I thought this route was secure. You want to take him out from cover? <laughs> Shit. What was that? <laughs> Two down. Hmm. Guess Datadyne security is getting smart to our little break-in. I can't access controls for the door up ahead. You're gonna have to hack it yourself. Get to the door's controls and bring up your data thief. So the data thief is the first of three gadgets in this game. The other two being the Loctopus and the Demo Kit, which we'll see later. See the blue blocks? They're intrusion countermeasure electronics. Ice to you and me. Hit the cursor when it's over the blue blocks to knock them out. Hit a white block by mistake and it turns red. Hit it again and it knocks you back a ring. Clear all the security rings and you take control. So I was trying to screw up here on purpose to show it off, but uh, it doesn't even let you screw up here in the tutorial. Made it past the security, Joe. Now for the job. Our employer wanted you to deliver a package. It's a cam spy. Comes equipped with an electromagnetic pulse for busting electronics and half a K of cyclonite for busting everything else. Hit the trigger and it's instant fireworks. Your job is to pilot the cam spy down to the CPU and nuke it. So here we have the cam spy. It's another another returner from the original Perfect Dark series, although it seems a little bit less compact. Here we can take a look at Joanna, who is apparently piloting this through her data thief. Anyway, we need to get down to the, uh, what we're told is the CPU core. Looks like you got a handle on the cam spy, all right. You ready to take out your target? No, come on, Joe. You didn't expect a clean run, did you? Trace the wires from the laser grid back to the circuit and take it down with an EM pulse. The cam spy, of course, makes stupid noises when you try to look around with it. That's it. Now for the opposite circuit. You did it. The last one. You got it. You made it, 
it, Joe. The CPU is dead ahead. I'm arming your cam spice explosives now. Here we go. Spider-Bots! Out of control! Move! Move! Son of a shit! Joe, come in. Over. Damn it, Chandra. Knew I should have rigged those explosives myself. Hey, what's life for that little excitement? That explosion knocked the sense out of you, kid? Jack, Cora can't control the spider bots any longer. They're heading for Joe. Get up on deck. We'll meet up there. So we heard a new voice there on the radio. That's Jack. Jack Dark. And he's, uh, he's Joanna's father. We'll be meeting him a little bit later. Uh, at this point, I'm going to just start talking about the game itself. Nothing we do is important. I'm also not going to introduce any of the weapons we see, because uh, we're not going to be seeing them for a while. Consider it a teaser. So, this game is the prequel to Perfect Dark. There's also an Over Xbox here. 360 launch title. Spider-Bots got me trapped! Um, get rid of people didn't like it. I'm just gonna put it bluntly. Place. People ripped it apart for pretty much every reason possible, and they are kinda right. Personally, I'm a little bit lenient, and I didn't mind this game. I actually kinda liked it. However, the, the art direction in it is pretty bad. Everything looks cartoony and plastic. The characters all look kind of goofy. Those spider butts were gonna have me for lunch. You keep an eye out for any more of those suckers. I'll get the power back on. Even the dialogue and voice acting is not is not good. The thing is, I think most of what bugs okay. people is that Time to get for Perfect here. Dark, this should have been way. much better. I think it's this way. And I wouldn't say it's a bad game. It's just painfully average. Everything about it is just, you know, half-decent or pretty good. Nothing about it stands out as being great. At the same time, nothing about it stands out as being horrible either. I also like to use Perfect Dark Zero as a uh, sort of a good argument for old versus new video games. If you compare Perfect Dark Zero to the original Perfect Dark, there's a lot of things that are different, and they're actually pretty representative of the way most games have been working. The original Perfect Dark had lots of replay value through its various multiplayer modes, uh, cheats being a big thing I like to talk about. Uh, Perfect Dark Zero has, has none of those things. It's it's very representative of the new new school of video games, where graphics and online multiplayer uh, take priority over the little things. It seems it seems like not a big deal, but all those little things games companies used to put in their games, like well, like cheat codes or little secrets, maybe. Um, like, they did that because that's what made the games fun. But these days, there's no time. You gotta get the game done. So you put your... You get your multiplayer done, and you get your single player done enough to... to validate the game. Perfect Dark Zero has... has no cheat codes, it has no shooting range, it has no cheese. And I guess the thing that really killed the game, I guess you could say, is that despite the despite the industry standard focus on graphics and multiplayer, neither of these is exceptional in Perfect Dark Zero. Just, you know, decent. I'll hold the door for Rod. Hey, if I was one to make excuses, I might cite the Perfect Dark's strange development cycle and the fact that it was a launch title for a brand new system. And if I remember correctly, they actually didn't get testing units for the Xbox 360 until a couple months before launch, because the specs were were kept secret. But I'm not here to make excuses. I actually don't mind this game, and 
I think it's a pretty decent Genesis story for Joanna Dark. And I guess what I'm saying is that if you, uh, if you have a little bit of consideration and a little bit of understanding, you might end up liking this game too. Shut my spine! Back to the game at hand, though. Um, I'm gonna explain some of the game mechanics, I guess. HUD elements, I guess I should say. If you look in the bottom right, you'll see the ammo counter. You don't need to worry yourself too much about that. But the one thing you'll see is the, the start button there with a the little document on top of it. You're going to be seeing that through probably the entire game. That indicates the, that what you can do is press start, and there's some, there's some text blurbs for our current objectives. Uh, I'm not going to be showing those, mostly because... not in-game anyway because it's just disruptive to pause the game and most of the objectives are either self-explanatory or I'll mention what needs to be said. So uh, get used to seeing that. If you were paying attention to the uh, game, you might notice I didn't do a very good job at protecting those scientists. All units, we have identified like the bomb. Target has Use breached the, the door zone. elevator. Don't let her escape. So we're finally on the surface. We'll see over here. It's Jack. This is our uh, dear old daddyo. He's got a big old gun. Somebody's still Automated launch sequence initiated. <laughs> You heard the little uh, computerized voices in the background there. You might have heard something about a launch. That's because as soon as you walk out here, we're gonna see a rocket in the middle of this this place we're in. And I actually remember first playing this game, coming outside and looking up. And it's... It's a pretty cool little set piece. Actually, this whole section of the level is pretty cool. We got some ships, gunships, hovering overhead and shooting at us. We got a big rocket in the middle. We got Jack firing his magnum at planes. We got guys on jetpacks. Now I should start getting uh, getting hit right around here. You'll notice that with the health bar. There's a colored bar, and then there's a grayed out area that just got filled in. So the grayed out area is what's called shock damage. And that will actually recover if you don't get hit for long enough. There's also sort of a, a circle around the health bar, and that'll be our armor, although I don't have any left at this point. Hopefully you won't be seeing too much of the health bar throughout the game, because that means I'm not getting hit. You did good, kid. But tomorrow night, the mission's for real. You ready? That's right, it was all a simulation. Actually kind of a nice gimmick for a tutorial level. Anyway, after every level, we can actually check out our statistics. I'm not going to be doing this normally because it's pretty useless, actually. Anyway, thanks for, uh... Thanks for watching. Next time we're getting going to get into the story for real. See you then. Reducing payload bay flow rate.